Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining me for this uh, Lunch and Learn webinar from the Office of Online Learning. This webinar is entitled Student to Student Engagement in Online Learning Environments, and I will be your host today presenting. Kathy Venable will give you my information in a minute. As we get started, I just want to remind you of a few things about this webinar. This webinar is being recorded. We will be sending you a link to this recording with some additional resources after the webinar has ended. You are not required to speak through the microphone or use your webcam during this webinar. We will have time for questions at the end of the presentation. Please take this time to ask us any questions using the chat feature so you are able to get in touch with us that way. I am Kathy Venable. I currently have an MS in Education, an MBA in Finance, and I am working towards my EDD in Mathematics Education. I'm currently an instructor of Mathematics in the Department of Mathematics and Information Technology at Mount St. Mary College. So I want to start out today's webinar by giving you a few basics of creating an online class and what's necessary in order to have the right tools um, to allow for appropriate student-to-student -student communication, which the webinar is about today. So I want to talk about some varied opportunities for learning for your students and how you would set it up. The first is you want to create a friendly online environment where students can stay connected to the course. And I should start by saying, actually, all of these things will be learned if you're going to teach an online course at the Mount. The Office of Online Learning is going to give you a introductory couple of weeks where you're doing training on this, and you will learn all about um, the pedagogical methods that are appropriate for creating your online course and the reasons behind them. And that's where I learned a lot of this information myself. So I want to create a friendly online environment where students can stay connected to the course. I do want to have a strong instructor-student communication, not today's webinar topic, but important nonetheless. I also want to have student-to-student -student communication and opportunities there and also collaborative assignments and individual assignments. In addition to this, I want to, or you will want to, be sure that you have very specific instructions when you are creating these assignments online. It's important when you have a face-to-face -face course, even more so on an online system, because you don't want students to be confused about what they need to do for the assignment. Um, you want to let students know what is required each week. You also want them to know what is optional. And you want them to know approximately how much time will be needed to complete each task so that they can more appropriately designate the time during the week to complete the activities for your course. OK. So in setting these expectations, on day one, you want to start by giving the standard course expectations. And what I mean by that is typically what you would do in day one of a traditional course. You want to make sure the student has information about the syllabi and what is expected of them. Um, and you also want to make sure you give information about academic honesty policies and um, the Office of Student Success and things of that nature that you would typically have in your syllabus. In addition to that, however, you are going to have a few additional parts that are not traditionally showing up in a face-to-face -face course. The first one is that in online courses, there's a huge amount of flexibility and therefore a lot more individual responsibility in the online course. So in these standard course expectations, you want to make sure that you are emphasizing that although students will have a certain amount of time to complete assignment, more so than usual, um, they need to find a good time to complete the assignment and be sure to stay on task in an individual manner. Um, so there is that individual responsibility to participate in the online course. Um, you also want to make sure that you remind students not to talk in text speak, and I'll talk more about that in another slide. 
Um, basically, you want to make sure to remind students that they are in an academic environment and that they are going to want to write responses um, with proper English and also respond to their fellow students and instructor um, with academic language. Okay. You want to make sure that they're going to stay connected to peers in the course. And this is something that I like to do by offering opportunities to force students to kind of stay connected to their peers initially, and then most find that it's a good thing to do to help them be successful in the course, and they continue on with it as the um, eight weeks progress. And the last is a collaboration statement. This isn't something that typically would be found in a traditional face-to-face -face classroom syllabus, but it's really important on an online course um, for students to have a collaboration statement and know what's expected in that regard. And I'll give some excerpts of mine in a minute. So reminding students that words have power and they want to be thoughtful before they type anything out online as well as they would do as they were in class. Okay, so for text speak, so a couple of major points. You're going to use common sense, or students are going to use their common sense, and they're going to use their academic voice and their academic language. So these are specific excerpts right out of my um, comments about text speak towards my students. And I'm just going to read them to you here so you can hear what I'm saying. Um, it's so easy in an online environment to fall into the habit of using text speak, but I need you to remember that this is an academic and professional environment, even over the internet, and I expect students to use proper English when writing assignments, posing questions, or responding to peers. Also, please show respect to your peers and myself, as we will do the same. It's very easy to disconnect from the fact that you are actually talking to a person over the net as compared to a face-to-face -face interaction, and I just need you to keep it in mind and be thoughtful in your responses to others. Uh, this may seem that it uh, would be an understood kind of common sense approach to a class, but sometimes over um, online, you students may forget this and you, this is just a good idea to recommend that to rem remind them in the beginning of your course that this is what's going to happen. The other thing that's really important that I found is super useful is the collaboration statement and again this is an excerpt of my collaboration statement it is a little bit longer than this but um, this is the gist. As an online course this collaboration between peers and also with the instructor is not only encouraged but I believe it will be vital to your success in this course. As such, know that you will be asked to participate in online discussions, will be asked to respond to questions posed, as well as peer responses to those same questions, and I will be here to start and help facilitate those discussions to help everyone get to a higher understanding of the material as a whole. So know that even though this class is mostly online, and technically you are solo at your computer typing away, you are not alone. We'll be working together on this course, not only on student-instructor online interactions, but also with peer-to-peer -peer discussions, etc. Communication and collaboration will get you far in this course, and I will make all efforts and give you the tools that you will need to help you be successful in this collaborative online environment. So both the text speak and the collaboration statement are part of my day one. As, student, as soon as students log on to my online course, they are able to see these and I make them a requirement for them to respond to both of them. Okay, so this specific webinar is focusing on the student-to-student -student interaction in the classroom and that requires students to stay connected to their peers and have this active communication in an online classroom. Things to note, first, these are all your students. They are all real people. They just happen to be over an electronic device, and it is still possible for them to remain connected. Um, but it has to be something that you put into the course. It is not something that will generally happen automatically. Typically, students in an online course do not know one another at all. 
and they will likely not reach out to their peers without a little encouragement from the instructor initially in the setup. The other thing is that you want to vary the student-to-student -student communication opportunities. Some are going to work for all of the students, but rarely does that happen. Usually there are certain types that will work for some students and other types that will work for others. You want to give a varied different kind of opportunity for communication for those students in order for them to be successful and to stay connected to the course. The more connected they are to the course material and to their peers and to the instructor, the more likely they're going to have a positive experience in their online course and the more likely they are to be successful in the course. So with these student-to-student -student communication opportunities, they are designed specifically to encourage collaborative communication um, amongst peers. Okay, so in designing online communication, how to encourage student-to-student -student interaction, there are several different kinds, and this is a slide where I'm going to take some time and give you examples of all of the things that I use in my classes. Um, some I use every semester that I teach online, others I use sparingly depending on the students that I have, but they all work well to encourage student-to-student -student interaction. The first one is student bios, and essentially what this is, is in order to get to know your students and also for students to get to know one another, it is an activity where they're going to post information not only about their academic pursuits, you know, perhaps what grade they're in uh, or what year they are, what um, their major is going to be, um, but also I want to know about their interests. I encourage them to post pictures of pets and loved ones. Um, the more friendly they want to be, the better it's going to be for other people in the class. A, the first time somebody posts a bio like that, that is very personal, there, the other peers are more likely to post one like that as well. And that allows everyone to be not just some internet space, but a real person with real interests. And that immediately is going to connect students to one another. Um, this is also something that as an instructor, professor, I would advise you to do as well. I do this, this, I'm the first one to do this, and then students will do this after me. Um, I do something like this in my traditional classes where I have an introductory activity every first class that I have, and it forces students to not just sit in their little space, but to physically move around and get to know one another in the class. It's by design. I want them to make friends in the class. I want them to create study groups and things of that nature. And this is my best way to try to do the same thing online. I feel that it works pretty well. And students get to know each other very quickly this way. Another thing that I think is really great is that students can always contact me. They can always ask me questions about homework or tests or anything that they're learning. Um, online at any time and I respond to their emails quickly. However, sometimes it's nice to just be able to ask a peer about a homework problem and see if they may have had the same issue and how they could have resolved it. So I create weekly homework help forums that basically are a discussion forum for each week of my course that allows students to post questions about the homework um, as specific as they want to be, and oftentimes students will respond to those questions with, oh, I had the same problem, this is how I figured it out. Um, in my course, I use WebAssign, so students are doing online homework with math problems, and students will give pieces of advice on how to use the WebAssign program. They'll say, you can practice another version a few times and make sure that you understand the type of question and how to complete it and then come back to the actual graded question. So this is something that I post every week. I try not to butt in, so this is really a student-to-student -student interaction. Um, so students often will ask questions there and 
the students that understood the material or had the same problem will be quick to respond, which is great. So they know they're not in it alone. The discussion groups are probably the most diverse way to communicate student to student in my um, experience. You can have discussion groups about anything. So I'm teaching online statistics. I will post a question that is um, maybe an interesting statistical fact that was recently posted on a newspaper or something to that effect. And I will ask students to respond to the statement um, given a specific question based upon it. And then I'll ask students to respond to one another. So I not only want them to have um, a response to statistical information themselves directly, I also want them to respond to one another and give, oh, that was a great insight into that question. I hadn't thought about it that way. Um, this is what I saw. Do you think this the same way? And there's often a back and forth that happens there. Um, and students get to know each other a little bit better there, but also feel very comfortable with their peers in that kind of setting. The other types of discussion groups that I um, like to post are videos or articles or things of that nature. Anything where a student is going to first interact with some educational material and kind of take it in, regurgitate it, make sure they understand it, and then give some sort of explanation of what they thought they understood. But also, I want them to respond to their classmates in that regard as well. Um, and I think it fosters a lot of great discussion. They get to some very interesting questions. And again, I stay out of it and allow them to come to some understandings on their own. And I feel like they appreciate that kind of collaboration amongst their peers. There are times when I have, I clearly have a student who is doing very, very well in the class within the first couple of weeks and perhaps some others that aren't doing quite so well. So I like to, as best I can, pair up students to create a peer-to-peer -peer tutoring opportunity. Um, students can do this either asynchronously or synchronously. Um, they can Skype one another or they can meet up in person. That's even a possibility. Um, but oftentimes this happens either over email or through Skype or something like that where students are able to talk to one another. Um, and students are able to tutor them. So they get a better understanding by tutoring the information to a classmate. The classmate understands the material a little bit better from getting it from a student. And it's different than if the instructor is giving the information. They just have a different rapport. Um, and oftentimes, it aids to both students learning the material and understanding it in a different way and much more deeply. I also like to give small group projects. And this can be hard or challenging, I'll say, um, in an online classroom because students are not in the same room. So it's not quite so easy to just say, OK, this table over here, just meet up together and have a discussion. Um, however, there are lots of benefits to students working in small group projects. And um, it's great for students to work in a team and, again, to understand things better from hearing it from their peers. So um, oftentimes, I will have small groups of two to three. Um, students, again, can work online. Some use um, things like Google Docs or th something to that effect, where they can all interact with the document at the same time. Um, and they can be talking on the phone or talking over Skype to figure out what they're going to do. Um, this comes in two forms. Sometimes this is a paper project where they're putting things together in that way. Um, and other times I ask them to do some sort of presentation, which makes it a little bit more challenging. But they are able to work it out and create these small group projects. And they're often very, very good. And I think that they get a lot out of working with their peers on this. It also, again, keeps them engaged in the course and allows them to continue having that kind of communication, that online communication. 
Um, some additional things I want to say here. In terms of back to discussion groups, I forgot to mention this before, um, there are guidelines and instructions or some good guidelines and instructions to responding to other students. So sometimes you can um, suggest a two-part response like what did you like or agree with or what resonated with you and other times you can ask a follow-up question like what are you wondering about or curious about etc just to continue the discussion um, and make it go a little bit longer. And there's also this possibility for peer assessments. Um, students are watching the group projects, usually. This is where this happens. They see the presentations that are created. And I ask students to give assessments about their counterparts. Um, this is taken to heart by the students that are presenting more so than if an instructor were giving them a grade or a, an assessment. Um, and oftentimes I'll do this throughout the course of the group project so that students can kind of get feedback on how things are going on their project and then they can continue to um, add information and make it better to create a great end of project assessment. Um, I also in small groups find that it's really important for students to assess the other people in the group. Um, one of the great things about group projects is that you can get all of this great material and if everyone does their fair share of work you can get to a really great end product. However, um, as we all know, we've, if you've tried group projects before, there are times certainly when one person in the group does a lion's share um, either because the other folks abandoned them or because it was something that they felt they needed to do. So in these peer assessments within the group, it really allows students to um, assess their group and that allows me to grade them more fairly to make sure that everyone is doing the appropriate amount of work. I want it to be a positive experience for them and if they get stuck with all the work, that is certainly not a positive experience. So, okay. so this is a point in time where I would ask for questions and answers. If you have any questions at this time, please take time to enter it into the chat box. You can also enter your preferred email address if you are interested in receiving a link to the recording of this session. I appreciate you taking the time to watch this webinar and participate with me today.